So we have a warm up where you simply have to do these limits. So again, let's give these a try. Alrighty, so I did these problems. For the first one, I simply had to plug it in. And then for the second one, I first factored it in order to cancel out the x minus 1. For the third one, I did the conjugate, and ended up with 1 fourth. So, take down these warm-ups, and let's move on. So you will be knowing what continuity means. And there are different types of discontinuity, and we're going to go over those as well. This is very important. I mean, this is, tells you... And at a college level, you also discuss continuity with these three requirements. So the, the function of f is continuous at c if and only if, if and only if means both ways, the function exists at c, the limit exists at c, and the limit equals the function. Those three requirements need, must be met in order to prove that the function is continuous. Alrighty, so for the one-sided limits, I'm only going to talk about it briefly because we already know what the one-sided limit really is. So when you have a limit, and a limit really talks about approaching a point from both sides, then the limit exists if the left and right side really agree. So over here, let me get a highlighter. As, C, as x approaches c, from the left side, we talk about a one-sided limit with a negative uh, annotation. As you approach from the right side, we talk about it from a positive annotation. So these are one-sided limits. Which brings us to when do we know if a limit really exists? A limit exists if the left-sided, a limit from the left side and the right side, both approach the same point. For instance, if you have some like this happening, that limit exists. But if you have some like this, if the limit from the left side does not meet the limit from the right side, then the limit does not exist. So let's talk about this continuity. Removable discontinuity is when the point is missing or misplaced. And that pretty much would violate this rule right here, where the limit is supposed to equal the actual point, the actual function at that point. So when that occurs, we call it removable discontinuity. Here would be an example. Since this limit, and we did it in the previous video, can be uh, reduced, you can pretty much factor out, and the bottom will have like will have an x minus one, which will cancel out the top. So the limit will end up working out. You will be able to plug into the denominator, but we know that that implies that the point didn't exist, since you had to cancel out a part of the bottom. That would be one example, that would be one case in which we would have re removable discontinuity. When the denominator had to be adjusted to fit the number that we had to plug in. Then we have a step discontinuity. And for the step discontinuity, it means the left side and the right side do not agree whatsoever. And that would pretty much violate if the limit existed condition. So the left hand and the right hand do not do not equal. Then we have a vertical asymptote discon um, discontinuity. And that happens when you have a vertical asymptote. And usually what that means is that the left and right hand side will not equal. A vertical asymptote rarely is responsible for something like this. I mean, in that case, the left and the right hand side would equal, but then you would still not have a value of uh, at, at C. So this, in this case, it would violate two rules, or actually three rules, and in this case, it would violate a single rule. Actually, correction, it would violate two rules. This one doesn't really belong here, but it will be important later, because at a cusp, which is pretty much a sharp corner, the limit, the limit does exist on both sides, and the point agrees with the limit, which means that it is continuous, but it will not be derivative. It will not be differentiable. The derivative does not exist. So the derivative would be discontinuous, but the actual function is continuous. 
Alrighty, and the reason why that is is because the limit tends to be the derivative tends to be a limit and on the left hand side you can see that the derivative would be a negative it has negative slope on the right hand side we have a positive slopeish kind of thing so it would violate the discontinu discontinuity the continuity rules one of them or, or more than one so the derivative would not be continuous here's an example for each so this is the re removable discontinuity and that's because the bottom can be factored in order to get x minus 6 and this is also an example because you can factor out uh, the bottom again so these will be great examples for removable discontinuity this is a step discontinuity because over here you will have a whole different value when you plug in 2 here and 2 there for the top one you end up getting about 5 and for the bottom one you're gonna get 6 so the left and the right hand side will be in totally different locations when you plug in two. And for the last one, when you plug it in, you're actually going to get a function that kind of looks like this. And the reason is when you plug in negative values in here, that's going to be positive all the time. But the bottom's negative, so you would end up being at negative two. And then when you plug in positive values, that's going to be positive and that's going to be positive. So that's going to be a positive two. And this would also be a vertical asymptote discontinuity because you can see that the left and the right hand side will not, the left and the right hand side will not equal. And uh, the limit doesn't exist and the function doesn't exist either.